And as soon as I started my photography education, I suddenly realised what an incredible uh, medium photography was for conveying stories. And I was particularly um, entranced by uh, lectures by Martin Parr and Paul Graham, who were two of our key tutors, uh, as well as uh, Karen Knorr, who was also a key tutor. Um, and I was really interested in the way they took this alternative uh, glance at the world, you know, looking at the world from a slightly sideways perspective, ordinary, everyday things, uh, often with a sense of humour, particularly in Martin Parr's work, but also with a sense of social purpose, uh, and a sense of social purpose that was quite different to what I'd call the traditional documentary photography that tended to be looking at um, overtly newsworthy stories or stories about poverty, poor housing, and so on and so forth, which, of course, are incredibly important. Um, but uh, what I was uh, so fascinated by was this way that these photographers were looking at what I would describe as the overlooked. And there was a very small group of us, which included Paul Rees, uh, Martin Parr, uh, Paul Graham, uh, Paul Seawright. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but there, there, it was a small group of people working in, in colour, and largely with medium and large format. So my very first project, which was actually a student project, was all about a town called Basingstoke, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. It's a very sort of, uh, not a very inspiring place, but I was interested in the, the concept of it being a new town and the fact that everybody who came from where I lived, if they didn't move to London, they moved to Basingstoke. It was a signal that you had made a success of yourself. Uh, I was also had been, as I said, influenced by Karen Knorr and her use of text in, in imagery and had sp spent a lot of time looking at work by people like Bill Owens who also use text and imagery. And I loved the way that you could create some kind of satire by the combination of the two things coming together. It's amazing how photography exhibitions have changed. And again, this is something you wouldn't necessarily know and there's very little documentation about, which is quite a shame. Um, but when I first started exhibiting in the 80s, exhibitions tended to be you know, prints were about this sort of size, you know, maximum, and they were in sets of 30, <laughs> roughly 30 to 35, uh, and they had small, thin black frames around them. So there was always an awful lot of material that one had to edit out, and I'm now really interested in going back and looking at some of this material again. Um, so I think it's really important when you're editing projects that they work together, but that you realise that your collection of uh, negatives are forming an archive that will, could be interesting in a different time and a different place. So when I left college, I uh, managed to get a commission. I, I got a small commission in the north of England, which I felt was highly unsuccessful, but at least got me doing some work. I then got a slightly bigger commission from Camera Work Gallery in the Museum of London to make this publication, which was funded by the Arts Council and various other uh, companies. Again, I was very, uh, it was very much about making a 35-image story and making a narrative run throughout uh, out, out the series of image, out, along the series of images. So I was commissioned to photograph London offices for a, a year and a half, uh, and I got into about 60 different places, and then I constructed and edited the series as if it was a sort of day in the life of an office. So it starts, there are timings that go throughout the book, uh, and then there's a kind of narrative that goes through with the text in a very similar way to the Basingstoke project, but it reads like a story in the day of the life of. So this one says, enjoy the benefits that have made an international success story, dot, 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 make stress work for you. And that's just from an advert from a business magazine. To be real battleships, they have to have at least one 40,000 square feet floor, big enough for six tennis courts. And that's from an article called Make Me an Office by Martin Pawley. So I think you get the sense that I'm reading lots of stuff around the subject.